Hey guys, today I'm going to show you what I do um, with my goat's milk and how I process that. So I have one milking goat. She's a Nigerian dwarf and right now she's giving between two and a half to three and a half cups per milking and I'm only milking once a day. But even so, all that milk adds up really fast in the fridge. And so today I'm going to show you what I do on my milk processing day and how I use all that milk to the greatest extent. All right, this is how I filter my milk. I've got some fresh milk here from today's morning milking. This is a reusable coffee filter. And um, with the reusable coffee filter, I like it because it saves money on um, buying filters. I think you can buy filters from different animal places or like goat specialty shops or whatever, but I just use this coffee filter because it does a really good job. See if we move it around a little bit. And this is nice because you can see when you're done straining the milk if there's any dirt or stuff in there. Probably indicates you should do a better job at washing or at least trying to keep the dirt out. I think. Yeah, I don't really have anything in there today. Usually I get a couple goat hairs for some reason. Um, hand milking, sometimes you'll accidentally pull some hairs out. So that is how I strain my milk. So here I've got about a week and a half's worth of milk from my little goat. I have a Nigerian dwarf. And what I've done is I've skimmed the, skimmed the cream off of all of it. You can see there's some cream in there. And I'll just save that cream in the freezer until I have enough to make butter. This is what my butter looks like when it's all done. It's a little more crumbly than regular butter and it does have a stronger flavor but I still think it's worth making. So it's one way I can get more value from my milk. So what I've done here is I've separate, I've smelled all of these because after about a week the milk starts to smell goaty. So these have a slight smell to them and these don't have any smell. So I'm going to use these for yogurt and then these I'm going to use for cheese. And when I make cheese I can add spices and stuff to kind of cover up the goat, goaty flavor. So there's nothing wrong with these three jars. It's just that they've started to kind of ferment a little bit. And so I want to make special use of those because they're not going to taste as good in, in yogurt and other other dairy products or drinking fresh or whatever. Now I'm going to make yogurt cheese or Greek yogurt. It's the same thing. Basically it's just strained yogurt. So I have some yogurt here and this batch turned out a little bit runny. So um, the runny yogurt is especially good for making yogurt cheese or Greek yogurt because you'll want to strain out the whey anyways. So that's what I'm doing here. Get all of it out. And this is just a bowl lined with um, some cheesecloth. And what I've done with this cheesecloth is taken two layers and kind of cut out a square. And then I surged the edges with my serger. And what that does is it makes it so the cheesecloth can go through the washer. That's really, really helpful because um, if you've ever tried to wash regular cheesecloth without having surged edges or finished edges, the washer will just eat it up. It'll totally mess up your cheesecloth. So, and that purple stuff is just from the starter, so don't get worried on me. That's just the blueberry, blueberry flavoring stuff. So now I'm going to take this and lift it up a little bit. I've got a rubber band here. We are going to rubber band this. Oops. Oops. <laughs> got yogurt all over. Alright, so that is done. And now, you can hang this from anything um, as long as you keep a drip pan under it. 
but I like to use a basket and this is like one of those Easter baskets with a handle that goes all the way across the top so what I'll do uh, I don't know if you can see this here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drape this rubber band over the top and then I've got a pen here that I'm gonna stick right in there so it is suspended like so and I'll just leave this um, hanging for 8 16 hours you can leave it hanging for up to 24 hours I'd say but I usually don't leave it that long so basically when the whey stops dripping out then you can take the cheesecloth off and you will have your Greek yogurt or yogurt cheese one of my goals for the Renaissance Housewife blog and also for the books that I write is to kind of encourage people and um, give them ideas of how to bring industry back into the home. So by and large we've outsourced pretty much everything. All the stuff we, the stuff that we, that we um, use is outsourced and made by somebody else and we have no idea where it comes from. We have no idea how to how to do stuff really, how to take care of plants or animals or how to take care of ourselves even. Um, all that has been kind of pushed up onto other people and we're a society of specialists. And there's nothing wrong with being a specialist, but um, with my blog I want to show people, show you guys how you can bring some of that industry back into your home and how it can be economically viable and actually beneficial to do that. So by processing my own milk and, and producing my own milk with my little goat, that's one way that I can bring some of that back into my home. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like to, um, like it below or subscribe. And leave me a comment. I love comments. So we'll see you guys next time.